Welcome everyone to this Lightboard session on vSAN. Uh, in this session, we're going to look a little bit more about uh, vSAN stretch clusters, which is a topology that uh, provides site-level resilience to maintain uh, the availability of your systems. So John, let's go ahead and get started. So when we talk about stretch clusters, this is a case where we have two geographically distinct sites. Now these could be, um, you know, as simple as from this building to the next building. Um, or it could be two data centers. We have a connection between them. You'll see this abbreviated ISL. This is inner site link is what we mean when we talk about that. And that's the connectivity between the sites. This is very important. Now you'll see we actually have a restriction on we want the latency on this inner site link to be at least five milliseconds or better. Um, and from a support basis, that's what we define. The reason for that is it's not that it magically stops working beyond that. It's that any write acknowledgement has to make that round trip and the performance that's going to basically decay the higher this latency goes. Based on the speed of light, this commonly works out to be 50 to 60 kilometers, uh, assuming you have dark fiber. Now we have two different types of protection schemes that are deployed here. We have mirroring between the sites and then we have a protection layer within the site. And so in this case, that data is written to both. Um, we have a tertiary site up here, and this is gonna need to be within 100 milliseconds. This is a witness site. So this provides a quorum service. So when one entire site fails, we, have, we can arbitrate out that the other site should be promoted and take over. This is an active-active stretch clustering system. So the data access is available from both. This virtual machine can be motion to the other side and back. Um, and again, we have the ability to protect that data within the, the site itself. So even if we lost an entire site, we could still lose an additional host in this case. The amount of protection and performance capabilities here um, can really be engineered to handle not, you know, quite a significant amount of failure within a region. And if you wanted to do additional asynchronous replication on top of this using things like vSphere SRM, um, and, and V for replication, as well as VCDR and say do DR to cloud, that could even provide an additional third, much farther away location. Yeah, you know, this uh, topology is so flexible for our customers because it, in, in so many ways, the, the need for site level resilience was always there, but it was so challenging in a traditional uh, architecture where you're using a metro cluster, uh, you always had to make sure that you had, you know, similar storage arrays in each and every site that you were going to be doing that. This can be achieved for any place that you have a vSAN host running in a vSphere, uh, in a vSAN cluster. This is seen all as a single cluster, not uh, two discrete uh, clusters, and that's how we provide that site level resilience. But Using the software that you, you already use and know, um, you can apply this sort of site level uh, resilience using um, you know, the same hardware that you already have. One of the things, of course, uh, to pay attention to is that performance of that inner site link. We wanna make sure that that's uh, high, high performance, high bandwidth, low latency, as well as uh, the actual specifications of the host, if you're, especially if you're using that secondary level of, of uh, resilience. It's worth noting that this is all controlled through your vCenter server using storage policies. So you will yep. define a policy that states both the, the site level resilience as well as that secondary level of resilience. Those are configured at the policy basis and then this, the system will substantiate that data placement. You don't have to, as opposed to traditional stretch clustering options with arrays, you would have LUNs or volumes that you would then have to go into the storage and configure. Um, and you know potentially have to have that conversation with your storage admin and you would have to they'd have to coordinate those additional things versus now the VMware admin has direct control over this the ability to configure it as well as immediately click and know what is whether it's actually following that policy or not indeed if you would like to learn a little bit more about vSAN stretch clusters you can go out to core.vmware.com uh, we have an entire guide built out for the purpose of understanding and implementing vSAN stretch clusters so that you can increase the odds of uh, success uh, we also have a nice infographic uh, that helps you step through the process of what does it look like when a site fails or when a host fails or when a disk group fails and it's a it's a wonderful uh, tool for you to really better understand how uh, vSAN works. So with that, thank you very much.